Twas a night before digging, and the lads of the river were ashore in the riverside, taxing their livers. A late night's reverie, and early to rise, telling tall stories, or should I say lies. Dipper Dredge Three, I'll say most sincere, was the best bloody digger I've ever been near. Not a day that goes by that we don't mention it. We got to see the Dipper dig. I mean, when you pull up to it in the morning, then it looked like some big prehistoric. It was every part of it dinosaur. was alive. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, was amazing. Groaning. You'd the see the could... steam go up, and we go, "She's ready." Somebody looking the other way, so I didn't hear anything, and then you'd hear the whistle. Because it was a mile out, you know, it, it took a good almost five seconds. Right there, the dipper dredge, you have a person that rides right here and dumps the load. There's a cable that opens up the bottom of the bucket. Then there's the guy they call the monkey, or they used to anyway, Ernie. He was the operator in here. Everybody had a job to do. You had a boiler man that fired up the boiler. You had an oiler that took care of all the engines. Uh, the operator, he had levers that swung, and then the other guy would control the depth of the dig. So everybody had to work in unison to make this do what it had to do. That boat was spotless. When I first saw it, I couldn't believe how something that old was so perfect. So they didn't let you touch it. You know, it was like a museum piece. It was like a work of art. It's an amazing piece of equipment that's no longer. There is no more. Those two guys right there, that was at Ernie's retirement party. And those, those Ernie was something else. He, he's the one that lost his teeth in the canal, so every time they saw a fish, they hey, Ernie, I think that, that one had your teeth. I'm pretty sure that, that fish was smiling at you. Oh, you knock it off. He'd get mad. Oh, and Kenneth Beetle. They'd have a, a meeting. We'd have safety meetings before the, dip, the dipper would dig. So Ernie, Ernie being the captain, he would come and say, okay, Beagle, Beagle, come here. We gotta have a meeting on the quarter boat. And Earl, come here, everybody. Said, name everybody and they'd all come. And then Beagle couldn't help it. He could not sit without interjecting. Somebody would just move and just You'd hear Beagle would go, quiet, the chief's trying to talk. Give the guy some respect, will ya? And he'd, he'd swear and yell. And then he'd say, go ahead, chief. You got the floor, head honcho. And then he'd stay right on it. And will you shut up, Beagle? I'm trying to talk. I hear that, but you're not saying anything. You know, and he, oh God, it would just be one, oh. Beagle, will you shut up? I'm ordering you to shut up. Oh, geez, now he's barking orders. Hail to the chief. You know, and he, he just started right in. He just never give up. And that, that, that's what made it so good, you know. And Kenneth R. Beagle, the ghost of the dipper. I told you. The ghost of the dipper. His hammer's still singing the song of the chipper. There's Dale who watches the boiler with care, getting up steam with oil and air. The scows are now empty, the boiler is down. Nothing but memories, no whistle, no sound. There, I did it. I didn't think it could be done. <laughs>